Okay, a very good morning to all of my beloved viewers. Okay, so uh, here we are to the final uh, chemistry STPM semester one uh, chapter, which is uh, we are going to discuss about uh, chapter 6C, phase equilibria. Uh, unlike the previous videos, uh, in these videos, we are going to do one shot. So we are going to straight away discuss all section A, B, and C. So uh, hopefully you all will help, uh, will find this video helpful to you. And if you like this video, please help me to give click a like button. And if you want to receive further notification about this chapter, uh, STPM chemistry, do subscribe to my channel and then uh, click the notification button for further information. So with organization, let's begin our discussion, shall we? Okay, so let's have a look at the, starting from the objective questions. So question number one sounds like this. Which of the following statement is true about azeotropic mixture of a solution with a positive deviations from the Rock's law? So what makes a positive deviation? A positive deviation is when the boiling point is lower than expected. Okay, so when it's brought to a fractional distillation, the first distillate will be the, usually the azeotropic mixture. So therefore, in here, the A is correct. Uh, and it cannot be separated uh, via fractional distillations. Okay, so always remember, uh, a non-ideal mixture can never be separated using uh, this uh, fractional distillations. Yeah? Okay, so, uh, and in here, uh, when it reaches the azeotropic mixture, so when it, uh, the vapor and liquid composition is the same. Okay, so in here, there should be two answers. One is A, another one is C. Number two, propanone and butanone were mixed together to form ideal solution. Given that vapor pressure of propanone and butanone are 56 kilopascal and 30 kilopascal respectively, what is the vapor pressure exerted by a solution containing mixture of 0.3 of propanone and 0.5 of butanone? So in here, you have to calculate the uh, mole fraction first, only then you are able to calculate the uh, vapor pressure exerted by each propanone and butanone. Okay, so in uh, here, uh, pressure exerted by propanone is 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.3 plus 0 0.5 multiplied by 66, you get 21 kilopascal, whereas pressure for butanone equals to 0 0.5 over 0 0.3 plus 0 0.5 multiplied by 30 kilopascal, you get 18.8. So sum up the pressure, you get a total of 39.8 kilopascal. So the answer is A. Then we go to question number three. Graph below shows the vapor pressure composition graph of the ideal mixture have sent and obtained. So which of the following statements are true about the discussion, uh, the description of the graph? So number one, uh, in here, uh, the boiling point of hexane is lower than that of hexane, which is true because the uh, vapor pressure uh, of this uh, hexane is higher than that of hexane. So therefore, it has a higher boiling point. Okay. So at the mole fraction, hexane 0 0.5, uh, Vapor pressure is 65, so this one you can obtain via this uh, calculation. So the, it seems that after the heptane is 0 0.5, okay, so the vapor pressure mixture is at 65. If you look uh, match carefully, it is not 65, right? it's 75. Okay, so uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can see from the graph here, uh, this is how you match. So you find your 0 0.5 line, which is this one, okay, and then you match to this one. So you can see clearly that it's 75 Pascal, isn't it? Okay. So this is how you determine for uh, the vapor pressure of the mixture. And number three, partial pressure of the hexane at more fraction 0 0.5 is 45, while heptane is 32.5. So it is true for hexane, which is 45, as shown by the calculation in here. However, for heptane is 30, not 32.5. So the answer is one and three only correct. Then one and three only correct. Huh? Okay, so that is for question number one. Okay. As for question number four, vapor pressure of pure liquid F and G are at 25 degrees Celsius are 96 and 75 kilopascal respectively. Total vapor pressure of a mixture is 0 0.4 mole of F have the same temperature is 83.4. Sorry, which of the following statement is true? So uh, in here, if you calculate the mole fraction, so uh, partial pressure of the F is equal to 0 0.4 divided multiplied by 96 kilopascal, you get 38.4. So in here, the vapor pressure of F in the mixture is 38.4, which is correct. Okay. As for vapor pressure of G, 0 0.6 times 75 is 45. So the total vapor pressure is 83.4. So it indicates that the mixture is an ideal mixture. So you can see from the uh, solution uh, questions that uh, in the appropriate Relations towards the ideal mixture. So we can say that F and G is an ideal mixture. 
Okay, so uh, and then as a fractional distillation carried out, since F has a higher vapor pressure, so definitely F will be first distillate. Okay, so the best answer in here is C. Number five, phase diagram shows a mixture of two liquids, J and K. Which of the following could be J and K? So if you see here, uh, if your azeotropic mixture in here has a higher, uh, uh, is an azeotropic mixture higher than the both pure J and pure K, so you can eventually tell that this is a negative deviation. So what mixture give a negative deviation? So students, you must memorize by yourself. Uh, what are the examples of the mixture that give a positive and negative deviation? So for negative deviation, usually acid water mixture. Acid water mixture usually give a negative deviation. Alcohol water mixture usually give a uh, deviation where the vapor pressure is lower than okay? so uh, that is a fact sorry vapor pressure is higher than expected for the deviation okay so i repeat acid mixture uh, acid water mixture usually gives a negative deviation okay because they have stronger intermolecular forces but what type of intermolecular forces you can refer to my previous youtube if you want to find out more and then for alcohol water mixture is examples of positive deviation so in here, it seems that the negative deviation, so it must be something with water and acid. So A is the best answer. There we go, so number six, boiling point composition graph of a mixture solution consisting of two liquid X and Y is shown below. So this is the ideal mixture. Huh? So which statement about the graph is true? Number one, vapor pressure of X is higher than the Y, so which is wrong because X has a higher boiling point than Y. That means that the vapor pressure is lower. Okay, then the uh, NW change of the mixture to X and Y is zero, which is yes, because uh, the NW change of the solution for ideal mixture should be equal to zero. Number three, uh, when mixture of point A is fractional distillate twice, liquid Y is obtained. So in here, you can try your best to uh, match the, this one. So in here, when you, this is what we call as the first distillate. Okay, then we have second distillate. So when it, uh, when it distillate twice, it seems that it is not enough to reach the Y. So you need to fractional distillate another time. Okay, so uh, it's three times, not twice. Huh? Okay, so uh, this one you have to use the appropriate ruler to help you in here. Okay, so that is how you determine. Okay, and then uh, the intermolecular forces of X and Y is almost the same because they are ideal mixture. Okay, okay so in here, uh, it's two and four. I'm so sorry. Huh? Two and four. Sorry, yeah, it's two and four. Huh? Three is wrong. You have to actually distillate three times. Let me for my mistake. So uh, this one later you can uh, correct inside the mixer. Huh? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so the answer is boy B. Okay. Okay, then number seven. Which of the following statement is true about isotropic mixture for solution with negative deviation from Rock's law? Number one, in a negative deviation, boiling point has a higher boiling point than expected. So therefore, D is already wrong. Ah. So when it's brought to a fractional distillation, the first distillate will you either be the pure X or pure Y here. Okay, let's say if the mixture is X and Y. Lah. Okay, so it will not be the azeotropic mixture unless you start from the azeotropic mixture, then it will be the first distillate. Okay, so uh, it cannot separate by fractional distillation. However, uh, inside azeotropic mixture, the liquid and the vapor composition is the same. Okay, so the best answer in here is C. Number eight, vapor pressure composition diagram of A and B is shown below. Okay, so this is a vapor pressure composition curve. Huh? Okay, so which of the following statement is not true? So obviously this is a positive deviation, a positive deviation. Okay, so a mixture show positive deviation, which is true. Okay, uh, and then if the mixture undergoes fractional distillation, azeotropic mixture will be the first distillate. So uh, in here, uh, if you uh, make the graph become reverse, okay, so it will for sure that the first distillate will be the azeotropic mixture. So B is true. And then C, boiling point of pure B is lower than the boiling point of pure A. So as you can see inside the graph, the boiling point of pure B is lower than pure A. And finally, the NW change of the mixture has positive um, deviation. 
there's a positive value which is correct because uh, if you have uh, all the four uh, all the this uh, this uh, intermolecular forces is weaker for a positive deviation therefore enthalpy change of the mixture is positive okay so therefore in this case um, all are true okay so there is no answer in here i'm so sorry for that okay there is uh, no answer in here okay sorry for that okay okay so all a b c d are true okay which of the following liquid will not form a homogeneous mixture so uh in water ethanol, it is a hydrogen bond, so they can form a homogeneous mixture. And then for B, uh, it is a benzene is a non-polar, methyl benzene is also a non-polar, 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 light like dissolved light, so it also be a homogeneous mixture. Tetrachloromethane is a non-polar, uh, water is a polar molecule because of hydrogen bond, so it, is, it, will form, it will not form a homogeneous mixture. And then finally, hexane and heptane are both, uh, hexane and hexane are both non-polar molecules, so they, they form a homogeneous mixture. So the answer in here is C. Number 10, body point of a methyl benzene and benzene are 108 and 79 respectively. A mixture containing 90% by mass of the benzene and 10% of by mass of the methyl benzene will boil at. Uh, this mixture is usually uh, ideal mixture in here okay so how do we actually tell whether a mixture is ideal or non-ideal uh, as i uh, introduced in the uh, youtube video i've already mentioned that number one they must usually have the same functioning group and then number two their number of carbon should not be too far away maximum difference is two uh, but usually they will set it as one okay so that is how we tell whether this mixture is an ideal mixture or not Okay, I repeat, uh, you must have the same functioning group. Difference between the two homologous series should not be more than two carbon. Okay, okay so that is for number 10. Number 11, which of the following property is not true for a mi mixture of liquid that shows a negative deviation? Number one, the molecule, intermolecular forces of the pure liquid is stronger than that of the... Uh, intermolecular forces of pure mixture pure liquid are stronger than the intermolecular forces of azeotropic mixture, which is wrong uh, because uh, inside a negative deviation, it is because the intermolecular forces are stronger. Therefore, the vapor pressure is lower than expected. So A is true. And then B, vapor pressure of azeotropic mixture is lower than expected, which is true. And then the, when the mixture is brought to fractional distillation, azeotropic mixture will not be the first distillate, which is also true. And the NW change of the negative mixture has negative value which is uh, true also okay so vapor pressure of a azeotropic mixture is lower than the respective eh? b is also true b is also true okay again i'm sorry uh, the uh in here also, again there is no answer for this huh? there is no answer for this i'm so sorry uh. okay okay and then number 12, which of the following liquid mixture shows a positive deviation from Rock's law? So as I mentioned just now, uh, usually between alcohol and water will give a positive mixture. Lah. So the answer is B. Okay, very straightforward. Lah. Okay. okay. Number 13, two miscible liquid X and Y is an ideal solution containing three more of X and one more of Y. Total vapor pressure at 20 degrees Celsius is 48 kilopascal. The vapor pressure of pure X is 52. What is the vapor pressure of pure Y at 20? So uh, if the more fraction of X is 3 over 4, which is 0 0.75, so more fraction of Y is 0 0.25. So vapor pressure of X is 52 times 0 0.75, 39 kilopascal. Therefore, vapor pressure exerted by Y is 48 minus 39, you get 9 kilopascal. So uh, 9 is equals to pure Y multiplied by 0 0.25. So pure Y, you have 36 kilopascal. So this is like reversible methods to get what is the vapor pressure of Y. Okay, so the answer is A. Number 14, when a mixture compound uh, X and water is steam distillate at a pressure 97.1 kilopascal and a temperature of 98 degrees Celsius, distillate contains solute compound X and water at the ratio 0 0.188 to 1 by mass. If the vapor pressure of water is 90, uh, at 98 degrees Celsius is 94.5 kilopascal, what is the relative molecular mass by X? Uh, I'm so sorry uh, to insert these uh, questions inside this module because it's already out of syllabus. It was actually belongs to the old syllabus. Uh, still, I show you the solution. So, the, so uh, you have to use this formula. MA over MH2O is equal to vapor pressure of A over vapor pressure of H2O multiplied by the molecular mass of A multiplied by the molecular mass of RMM water. 
So you get the ratio is 0 0.188 to 1. So 97.1 minus 94.5 multiplied by the molecular mass of A over 94.5 times 18. So your MA is 123. Okay. But like I said, this question is already out of syllabus. So even if you don't understand, then it's not a problem. Okay. Finally, number 15, which of the following solution has the lowest vapor pressure at 30 degrees Celsius? So usually the one with the lowest pressure, you have strongest intermolecular forces. So the one with the strongest intermolecular forces here is between magnesium and chlorine because it has the most number of ions per decimeter cube solutions. Okay. Okay, so with that, that is all for the objective questions. So immediately we go to the structure question. Okay, so in section B, structure question, when 50 centimeter cube of liquid A is mixed with 50 centimeter of liquid B, so uh, the total volume of the mixture uh, of oh, this 100 centimeter cube. What is the enthalpy change given by mixture A and B? Explain your answer. So if 50 plus 50 give exactly 100, so it is what we so call as an ideal mixture. Okay, enthalpy change will be equals to zero. Okay, so that is the two marks for the explanation. And then B, given the vapor pressure of pure A is 78, vapor pressure of pure B is 90, sketch and label the phase diagram below. So boiling point composition of uh, liquid A and B. Yeah? So uh, when the question just asks you to sketch, Okay, so it doesn't mean that you really have to uh, exactly show where are the boiling point of A and boiling point of B because they give you is the vapor pressure, not the boiling point. The purpose of giving you the vapor pressure is to let you know which one should have a higher boiling point, which one should have a lower boiling point. So since A has a lower vapor pressure, that means A will have a higher boiling point. So your graph should more or less look like this. Okay. So once you get the curve, so you must also label everything above the curve is gas, everything below the curve is liquid, and everything in between here is the liquid and gas are at equilibrium. Okay. So usually this will give you the two marks. C, calculate the mole fraction of A in the vapor, uh, in the vapor containing 0, 1.0 mole, mole, uh, 1 mole of A mixed with 1.50 mole of B at this temperature. So uh, PA is equals to, you calculate the vapor pressure. Lah. So PA is equals to 1.0 divided by 1.0 plus 1.5 multiplied by 78. Then uh, PB is equals to 1.50 divided by 1.00 plus 1.5. So as usual, I'll substitute as exactly given to you questions. Huh? So uh, vapor pressure of B is 54.0. So uh, total up your vapor pressure will be 85.2 kilopascal. And then finally, you have to divide by the pure vapor pressure. So 31.2 divided by 85.2, you get 0 0.37. So that is how you're going to calculate uh, the mole fraction of A in the vapor pressure. Okay, so always remember the four steps. Uh, number one, calculate the vapor pressure of a by using the Rock's law, PA is equals to XA times P not A, and then PB also the same. Then total up your vapor pressure by using Dalton's law. Okay, P total is equals to PA plus PB, and finally you use the Dalton's law because it's already in the vapor state. So Dalton's law, P, uh, XA is equals to PA over P total. Okay, so that is how you calculate. Okay. So with that, that is for question number one. Question number two, boiling point composition curve of a mixture of ethanol and water at the constant pressure is shown below. So this is the graph. Okay, so uh, in this question, they already give you the graph exactly. So you have to follow everything according to the graph. And usually in such cases, uh, the, 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 the answer is very significant here. So you have to be careful. Uh, look at the graph carefully, okay? State and explain the type of deviation from the rock's law exhibited. So if you look carefully, the isotropic mixture has a boiling point lower than expected. So this is a positive deviation. Lah. So why was positive deviation? Vapor pressure is higher than expected since the intermolecular forces between the mixture is weaker than the pure water and pure ethanol. Okay. Then number two, what is meant by azeotrope two marks? In azeotrope, you must have two uh, very important definition points. Number one, it's what we call a mixture has a constant boiling point where the equilib uh, where at equilibrium, uh, composition of the liquid is the same as uh, vapor pressure uh, composition of the vapor, okay? So allow me to repeat again. What is meant by azeotropic mixture? Azeotropic mixture is a mixture where it has a constant boiling point where the equi uh, equilibrium is established between the liquid and the gas. Okay, so that is the two key points. Huh? So try your best to learn how to define isotropic. Number three, from the graph above, uh, determine the vapor composition of the isotropic as the boiling point and the vapor pressure composition of distillate when 45% of ethanol is fractional distillate twice. Okay, so uh, now number one, 
what is the vapor composition of the azeotropic mixture? You can see from the uh, graph in here. Okay, so from the graph, the uh, vapor pressure of the azeotropic mixture, if you look carefully, is somewhere in between 95 to 96. Okay, so in here, I will draw as 95.5 because to me, it looks like it is in the middle of the line, isn't it? Okay, so 95.5 to 96 is correct. Lah. Okay, then it says that when uh, it was brought to fractional distillate twice, so brought to fractional distillate twice at 45%, so you have to look where is your 45%, so 45% is here, okay. Okay, so when you fractional distillate twice, so this is fractional distillate one time, okay, then you go down, then this is fractional distillate twice, Okay, then you go down in here. So it seems that uh, it will seems that the fractional distillation goes somewhere in between eighty three to eighty four. Am I right? Or is it because the, the line is too curvy? No, too, this one. Let me check again. Huh? Okay, here. Okay, so uh, you have to use your ruler carefully outline. Okay, so if you calculate the graph in here. The, it seems that the vapor pressure stopped at the point of 83. Lah. Okay, do you see that? 83, yeah. Now, because the graph is given to you, uh, so the answer is quite selective. So uh, in, in that year, that, uh, we are looking at the uh, uh, composition in between 82 to 83. Okay, so if you are getting, getting between that range, then your answer should be correct. So this is what it means by fractional distillate twice. Okay, so you vaporize, condense, vaporize, condense two times. Huh? Okay, so that is what it means by fractional distillate twice. Huh? Okay, so back to the question. Okay, so uh, 82 to 83, 95 to 96. Okay, and four, state the physical method to obtain absolute ethanol from isotropic mixture of ethanol and water. Uh, you cannot use fractional distillation because fractional distillation will get you the isotropic mixture first. Okay, so you will never be able to get absolute ethanol. So what you can do is you have to remove either ethanol or remove water. Since water has a smaller composition, usually we choose to remove the water. So how to remove water? We usually use a dehydrating agent, such as silica gel, or you can mix with calcium chloride, cobalt chloride, so can, so either way. Yeah? Okay. okay, so with that, that is for question number two. Then we have question number three. A solution is formed by adding 100 centimeter cube of P to 100 centimeter cube of Q at a temperature uh, room temperature, the volume of the solution is 198 centimeter cube. Is this and W change a positive, negative, or zero? So since the vapor, uh, the total volume is lesser than the expected volume, so that means they have a stronger intermolecular forces. So if they are stronger intermolecular forces, that means it is a negative uh, neg deviation. So in negative deviation, the and W change should be also negative, exothermic. Okay. So number two, if the liquid water is Q, what give an example of liquid P. So as I already mentioned just now, what give a negative deviation usually is the acid water mixture that give the negative deviation. So write any type of the acid, then you should get the one mark here, yeah, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, any type of acid that you want. Then number three, sketch a level vapor pressure composition curve for the diagram of the solution obtained in two. So uh, any, now be careful uh, because they want vapor pressure composition curve. Huh? So vapor pressure composition curve, you must make sure that it has a negative uh, deviation. So everything above the curve is liquid. Everything below the curve are gases. So usually curve one marks, labeling one marks, two marks in here. Then number B, hexane and heptane and octane are mixed with to form an ideal mixture at 40 degrees Celsius. Vapor pressure of heptane and hexane are 12.2 and 4.1 respectively. Calculate the mole fraction of heptane in a vapor pressure obtained when 0.5 is mixed with 1.0 of octane. So and here you have to calculate vapor pressure of octane and uh, heptane and octane respectively. So you have 0.5 divided by 1.5 multiplied by 12.2. And then vapor pressure of Octane is 1.0 divided by 1.5 multiplied by 4.1 kilopascal, you get 2.73. So total vapor pressure in here is 4.07 plus 2.73, you get 6.80. Then you have to calculate the uh, mole fraction by using Galton's law. So 4.07 divided by 6.80, so you get 0 0.6. Okay. Okay, so this is a very direct, very straightforward. 
questions. Uh. So hopefully you all will be able to answer that. Okay, so with that, that is all for the structure question. And finally, we move to the essay question. So essay question number one sounds like this. Pure nitric acid is a colorless liquid which forms an azeotropic mixture with water. Aqueous nitric acid shows a negative deviation from Brock's law. Number one, explain why aqueous nitric acid shows negative deviation. So you have to explain why is it a negative deviation. Ah. So usually you have to explain uh, water and acid mixture usually dissociate to give the ion, uh, to give the nitric acid, uh, nitrate ion and acidic ion, which has a stronger intermolecular forces, therefore vapor pressure lesser than expected. So all these kind of points are very essential. Okay, so interaction between pure nitric acid with water is an ionic bond. Therefore, it, has a, it is stronger than hydrogen bond between pure nitric acid and also pure water. Therefore, vapor pressure is lower than expected and that is why it gives negative deviations, okay? Okay, then number two, sketch a boiling point composition curve for aqueous nitric acid given that the nitric acid boils at 78.2 and azeotropic mixture contains 68.2% of nitric acid and uh, boils at the mass at 121 degrees Celsius and 1.1 kPa. So uh, in here, they give you pure nitric acid at 78.2, but they don't give you water because you should automatically know by yourself that water is 100 100 degrees Celsius. Huh? And then the azeotropic mixture boils at 68.2% of nitric acid at 121 kPa. So all these, when they give you a complete description, you must be able to sketch the curve uh, accordingly. So it shows to you as in the diagram. So you must have a first mark usually give axis, boiling point composition. And then second mark goes to the, uh, the this one, okay, uh, the curve. So this is the curve for uh, negative deviation. Okay, so you must label. Huh? And then finally, label vapor and liquid. Everything above the curve is vapor. Everything below the curve is liquid. And finally, the azeotropic mixture. So 121 degrees Celsius, 68.2 percentage by mass of the nitric acid. Okay, so that is how you get the four marks for this case. Okay. Okay, number three, state the changes which occur when the composition of the residual liquid when the solution of 80% of nitric acid is distillated. So in here, according to, if you look back at the graph, huh, when 80% of the nitric acid is fractional distillated, okay, so I sketch for you. So let's assume that this is the 80%, okay? So uh, eventually we'll find out that the first distillate will be the pure nitric acid, okay? And then when you get your first distillate is the pure nitric acid. So second distillate will be the uh, first distillate is the nitric acid, okay? Circle up. And then the second distillate will be the azeotropic mixture. So what will give the residue? The residue will be the impurities plus water, okay? So that is how you should answer in here, okay? Okay, so back to your questions. So uh, in here, as temperature decreases, percentage increase by each distillating plate until pure nitric acid is first distillate, followed by azeotropic mixture as the second distillate, pure water with some impurities as residue. Okay, so that is how you should expect it to answer here. Yeah, okay. okay, number four, what is the volume of azeotropic mixture of aqueous nitric acid to prepare uh, one decimeter cube of 2.0 mole per decimeter cube of nitric acid. So given to you, azeotropic mixture has a density 1.42 gram per centimeter cube. So this is a very technical question. Huh? So if you can understand very good, cannot understand, then never mind what to do. Okay, so it seems that when the uh, given to you, you are going to prepare two mole per decimeter cube of nitric acid. So in another word, you have two mole in one decimeter cube. Okay, so once you get the two mole per one decimeter cube, you calculate the mass of the nitric acid. So the mass of the nitric acid is two mole multiplied by 63. 63 is the RNM. Huh? But inside here, because uh, it is not 100% pure nitric acid. So because we only want to focus about the mass of the nitric acid that we should get. So inside this azeotropic mixture, it contains 68.2% only of the nitric acid. So versus the 100% of the mixture, so that is why the mass of the nitric acid inside the azeotropic mixture should be two more times 63 times 100% over 68.2. So you have 185 gram. Then given to you density is equals to uh, 1.42. So 1. Uh, 185 gram divided by 1.42, uh, not 185. 185 gram divided by 1.42. And therefore you should pour out 130 centimeter cube of the nitric acid. So in other words, uh, if you want to prepare uh, 2.0 mole, one molar, uh, sorry, one decimeter cube of two molar of nitric acid, 
you pour in 130 centimeter cube inside the distillation flask, uh, sorry, inside the volumetric flask, and then you add in another 870 centimeter cube of the water inside there. So therefore you have the uh, 2.0 molar nitric acid. So this is a very standard way of how we prepare standard solutions inside laboratory. You have to also consider for the terms of the azeotropic mixture and also the density here. Okay. Okay, so with that, that is how you answer essay question number one. Then we got essay question number two. Uh, ethanol is the most common solvent uh, in here due to the ability to dissolve in both organic and also water. Boiling point composition curve between ethanol and propanol are given below. So you can see that this is the ideal mixture. Okay, so this is one more ethanol. So number A, uh, explain why propanol. Uh, so what is the state Rock's law? So what is Rock's law? Rock's law stated that the vapor pressure of the solvent over a solution is given by the product of the vapor pressure of the pure solvent multiplied by the mole fraction of the solution. Okay, or simply PA is equals to XA and pure not A. Okay, or not. And then B, explain why propanol has a higher boiling point than ethanol because you have a greater intermolecular forces. So uh, propanol and ethanol both are hydrogen bond, but because molecular mass of propanol is higher, therefore the hydrogen bond is slightly stronger. Okay. And then number three, explain why the boiling point composition mixture is similar to that of the ideal mixture. So both molecule has almost the same intermolecular mass. However, vapor pressure of ethanol is slightly higher than the propanol. So both of them have the same functioning group. Both of them are alcohol, or you say both of them contain hydrogen bond. Okay, so that is how you explain the boiling point composition curve. Okay. Then B, when the mixture of ethanol and cyclohexane are, are mixed, the boiling point of the mixture at different composition is given in the table below. So you have more fraction and boiling point. So A, uh, plot a label boiling point composition graph of the mixture between ethanol and cyclohexane using the information. So you should plot your graph. Uh, when you plot your graph, uh, you get only the blue line in here. So the red line is you join afterward. Okay, so uh, usually axis one mark, the plotting one mark, and then the label also one mark. So you should be able to uh, label the curve later, the red line later you should add, and then if possible, label here as the azeotropic mixture. Okay, so this is how you are going to sketch the graph for the boiling point composition curve between the cyclohexane and also the other one. Okay. Then number two, state and explain the type of deviation caused by the mixture. So the mixture caused a positive deviation. Why? Because the intermolecular forces between cyclohexane and ethanol are weaker than the pure cyclohexane and pure ethanol. So that's why positive deviation, causing the boiling point of the azeotropic mixture to be lower than expected. Or you said vapor pressure is higher than expected, also can. Okay. And finally, from the graph, deduce the first distillate and residue if the mixture contains 0.4 of cyclohexane with 0.1 ethanol undergoes fractional distillate twice. So uh, in here, if you look at the graph, so 0.4 of the ethanol, which is here, so I'm going to sketch for you. So you start from 0.4 here, okay? So fractional distillate once, okay, fractional distillate, uh, okay? So your first, well, uh, your first, uh, what we call that, your first distillate will be the pure azeotropic mixture. Then your residue will be anything that is residing here. Okay, so in here, when you have 0% of the cyclohexane, then this is the pure ethanol. Understand that? Okay. So I clear my drawing. Okay, so your first distillate will be azeotropic mixture and your residue will be the pure ethanol in here. Okay, so that is how you get the two points, okay? Okay, so we, I guess that is all for the essay questions for here. And that is all for the videos that I have for you. So hopefully you all will find all the videos that I've already given to you for the same one are useful for you. And uh, I hope that you'll be keep on supporting to my video. Recommend to your friends whenever you need. And if you need the books, please go to the Shopee and buy from me, yeah? okay? So uh, I guess that is all for the video that I have for you. So see you all around. Good luck for your semester one examination. And I'll see you all in the future semester two and semester three. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye.